Hi and welcome back to Processing Video Tutorials. Last video we took a look at how to create a constructor and also we created two different balls starting at different positions and also having different speeds. We found a problem however when the ball disappeared on the right side of the screen and we also discovered that this was because we weren't checking for the x position being greater than the width or the x position being lesser than zero. So what we're going to do here is for this ball 2, we're going to make sure that we change, or rather duplicate this, but instead of being get y plus 25 greater than height, it's going to be get x plus 25 greater than width. And also get x minus 25 less than 0. And what we're going to do is instead of set the dx, we're going to set the, sorry, instead of set dy, we're going to set dx. Instead of get the y, we're going to get the x. And what this is going to do is if the x position plus 25 is greater than the width, meaning the ball has arrived at the right side of the screen, it's going to reverse the speed in the x plane. Let's have a look. And now we can see that it's bouncing up and down and left and right. And I'm not sure if you can see it very well on the video, but the ball isn't really touching the sides of the screen. Rather, it's bouncing just slightly before touching the edge. And I'm not sure if that's easily visible, but there is a good explanation for that. Originally, we hard-coded the 25s here, because this is the radius of the ball that we originally had. The ball was 50 units in diameter. The ball 2, however, is only 25 units in diameter, which means the radius is only 12 and a half. So what we have to do is instead of use plus 25, we have to use the ball's size divided by 2. That would be 50 divided by 2. And here it would be 25 divided by 2, which would be 12 and a half. In order to do that, we need to not only have dy, dx, x and y getters, but we also need a get size. And then we've got it. And now coming back here, we can do ball dot get size divided by two. And the same for here. And we're not going to see any difference there. But we're going to do the same thing down here. And now we shall see the ball bouncing on the very edge. And I'm not sure, once again, if you can tell from the video, but the ball is indeed bouncing on the edge, as opposed to slightly before it. And in order to have the same for both balls, we're going to copy this bouncing left and right, and do the same for the first ball. Even though this ball is not bouncing left and right right now, it could do it in the future, so we want to have this there just in case. And there we have it. So that's how we can make both the balls bounce on both directions simultaneously when necessary. So next we're going to be looking at how to clean up the code, make it a bit more efficient, and then we're going to keep moving forwards developing this game. So I'll see you in the next video.